Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, from California, two people on Xanax this morning, <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown and Alex Bennett. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. You uh, know, yes, we, we're not, we, a pinch of Xanax knocks us out for a day. I'm, I do it, and the next day I'm like loopy until maybe, well, what happens is about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I suddenly get drowsy and catch about a 15-minute nap, and then I'm okay with the Xanax. It's strange. I, I can't imagine taking a whole one. Yeah, well, I, I don't take a whole one. I get, I get the two milligrams, and then uh, uh, then I uh, ch- take a quarter of it. Okay, so I take about a half of a normal dose. And uh, that uh, uh, that puts me to sleep, but it doesn't wake me up. That's the problem. In the old days before that, I don't know if it's still around. I used to take a Valium, if you remember those. Okay, okay right, yeah. yeah. You remember when Valium people. first started? Now we're talking about, I'm talking about drugs with Larry Brown. <laughs> um, uh, uh, do you remember when, uh, when, Zan- when uh, Valium first started, it had a hole in the middle? I don't. I just remember they were kind of yellowish, but I don't remember the hole. Yeah, in the very beginning, they had a hole in the middle. And somebody said, why does that have a hole in the middle? And they said, because it's a lifesaver. You know, <laughs> so, anyway. How are you doing otherwise? Uh, holding up. I don't, uh, I'm not taking too many drugs, but uh, sometimes you need to sleep. So, yeah. I, I think you need to sleep to escape the world we live in. Yeah, and you don't get out much, do you? No. I, I get out to run, and uh, I, I can't stay in the park. I, like you told me, you've stayed in for days. I can't do I've that. I've stayed in for weeks. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. I could I, do that if I had, like, cable and high-speed Internet. Maybe, well, also if you had 2,500 square feet. Yeah, that would just bigger than a house. Yeah. You, you know, but still, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm loopy all the time. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm just loopy. Period. Well, that's, that's our. We both have allergies, so that's why. That helps too. But yeah. I mean, I'm also. Uh, I also had the radiation earlier this year, which gives me fatigue. Uh, supposedly, that can last upwards to a year. Um, yeah. You know. So between all of them, uh, I, I. You know. I mean, I would love to be able to just go out and not have fear of going out. You know, like I have a dental appointment next week. Uh, to have my teeth clean, uh, I'm going to cancel it again because I'm not. I don't want. I don't want to have to go to Midtown. I don't want to have to take a, uh, uh, you know, a car over there and a car back and take any kind of risk that I'm exposing myself. Especially, well, yeah. There's so many people in New York. As going out would be a problem. Well, especially because we're so close to the finish line. You know. Yeah. When are you going to get the vaccine? Uh, it's questionable. The, the mayor of New York wants to start giving people my age and Marjorie's age the vaccine starting next week, if he can. But the state has to approve it, and Cuomo's still trying to take care of a whole bunch of other people first, right? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I understand the doctors should get it first and the uh, first responders and so on and so forth. The people that have to deal with the public in general and are exposed to it on a daily basis. I, they, yes, they should get it first. They should also get it first for all the work they've done. Uh, but, uh, you know, for us, uh, we should we should definitely, we're, 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 it's like they have... The first wave, then they have one B and uh, rather one A and one B, and we're one B. So whenever one Bs start happening, we can go out and get it. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who cares? What? We're all gonna die. 
<laughs> I'm getting to be like you, Larry. We're all going to die. Well, I, I found uh, this is, yeah. I, know, I know you love trivia, but uh, this has to do with death. What do these, these people have something common in their death? Uh, Charlie Chaplin, W.C. Fields, Dean Martin, Eartha Kitt, James Brown, George Michael. Oh boy! They all have something very common in their death. George Michael. Yeah. Well, George Michael was. Did, did he die from AIDS? No. Don't think so. Um. Oh boy. Um. They were all killed by William Randolph Hearst. I don't know. <laughs> um. Uh. What? That's a good question. That's a really good one because Chaplin. I'm trying to remember what Chaplin died of. He was old. Yes, he was old. So was it some kind of old age malady? No, it's uh, when they died. Oh, they all died on the same day? They all died on Christmas. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that. Really? Okay. And I think I went through this one. There's, I think, about eight more celebrities that died on Christmas. I got to look them up. But there's a bunch, yeah. Yeah, but who were those again? Uh, Charlie Chaplin, Dean Martin... W.C. Fields, Eartha Kitt, James Brown, George Michael. Yeah, wow. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's kind of a, that kind of a, ruins the Christmas, doesn't it? Or as Jews call Christmas, December twenty fifth. You know. So, but uh, anyway, it was. Uh, no, that, that's a good question. So listen, uh, this is our first uh, little gathering, you and I. This year, 2021, mm -hmm. and I love how everybody went, you know, thank God 2020 is gone. Welcome 2021. And I've, I've often said, how do we know it's going to be any better? I just posted out the other day. I said, <laughs> you know, something like, yeah, there's like there's never been two bad years in a row. Right, right. But as soon as I said that. What happens? This whole storming of the Capitol. Well, we're off to 2021. <laughs> the Civil War has begun. Yeah, right. Yeah, you thought things couldn't get worse? Add this to it, okay? You know, I think a lot of this uh, this reaction to, like, what happened uh, with uh, the Capitol and so on wouldn't have happened without COVID. But people got so... COVID fatigue, did they started acting wonky? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I said, oh, crime's up. Well, crime is up, of course, because it, there's a certain frustration in being stuck indoors all winter. Yeah, people pent up, they go nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going nuts. I'm going crazy. Uh, I, I go into fits of depression where I'm. Because Marjorie goes to bed around 9.30 at night, and then I do my show, and then I don't get to bed till about 2. And for about an hour, I'm sitting there in the guest room just getting ultimately depressed over the fact that I'm all alone, you know? And 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 it, being stuck indoors really sets in. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't make me a Republican, <laughs> you know, so... How bad can it be? Uh, but, uh, I mean, these people who did what they did, uh, I think part of it was the craziness, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, imagine uh, imagine if you were in prison for a crime you didn't commit. <laughs> that would be like the most depressing thing ever. Oh, it? yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and there's a lot of them. The, oh, of course. Of course. Um you know, I mean, uh, and, and we don't catch up with enough of them. You know, there are a lot of no. these innocence projects and things like that. But they're going after the people who are on, like, death row and so on. But just people who were arrested for something they didn't do and now we're spending time in jail and nobody really yeah. gives a crap. They don't have much of a family or anything like that. And they're just sitting there rotten in jail. You know, if a prosecutor goes after you because he doesn't like you and you get wrongfully convicted, you have no, you can't sue the prosecutor. There's nothing uh, you can do to that. I think if, if you can show there was a certain political malice involved, um, I mean, they're they're protected somewhat against that sort of thing. But if you can prove that they that they 
uh, fake the evidence against you or let eb- uh, counter evidence not be presented or something like that, I think they can be sued, yeah. In fact, they can be thrown out of office. Well, they should be. Well, the problem is district attorneys who do the prosecuting are all politically appointed. You, you, you run for office. And so if you're going to win again, you've got to show a record of really being tough on crime and things like that. And so, you know, a lot of people have been uh, just sent to their deaths because of district attorneys who wanted to get reelected. Um, thousands, yeah. Well, I, I don't know what the number would be because we'll never know. But, I mean, it's still, I mean, it, it, it's a political thing. So anyway, how's how's uh, Larry Bubbles Brown's career? <laughs> well, you can't. We can't work. That's the problem. There's nothing uh, open. Yeah, right. And I think comedy clubs will probably be among the last things to reopen. Well, if you had yourself a computer that could do it, and if you had yourself a cell phone that could do it, you could do those comedy Zoom calls. Yeah, I heard most of those are disastrous. Uh, I'm sure they are. <laughs> you know. Certain things are meant to be live, I think. I would I would say that's true. You know. Um and and and, and you, you know, you're you're it's just a shame because like anything else like working out, like you know, m- muscle memory or whatever, whatever you can call it. Um um all that stuff has to be exercised. Yeah. And and it, just like anything else, you have to you have to be able to you know rehearse and and uh, uh, and get on stage and develop your act and play in front of an audience. And I, I imagine you lo- have lost a little bit of your chops, right? Oh yeah, I did a couple of things outside last summer, and I've talked to other comics, and they're all. They're having trouble remembering twenty minutes of their act. So. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you yeah. you do an act all your. Oh, by the way, I watched your videos uh, that you have or audios. Listen to your audios, Marjorie. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Well, I haven't. <laughs> well, I, no, I, I, I. You told me you You told me you laughed. You emailed me that. Well, I just I went. I just told uh, Alexa, uh, play Larry Bubbles Brown, and it found your your comedy album. And uh, I got to tell you, you're better than you ever have been. Really? <laughs> yes, you're better than you've ever been. You should be getting worse. You're getting old. You, you should I'm be getting old. worse. Uh, you, you were better than I ever remember you being. And you were wow. good. You were good. But you're, you're at the top of your game now. Holy Christ. Maybe I won't kill myself. <laughs> Mar- <great>. Marjorie <laughs> was listening and literally pissing her pants, which she has a tendency <laughs> to do when she laughs too hard. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, it was, it, it's really, and nobody has heard it. They really should go on. They should just say, you know, Alexa, I can say Alexa cause I use the other word to make mine go off, uh, play Larry's bubbles Brown. And, uh, the, the, there will be the album and listen to it. It's not that long either. It's only about what? 30 minutes, something like that. Is it? I don't. It's pre- we record. I think we recorded. It was about fifty, but they, I don't know what they. Took well, maybe out. maybe it didn't play all of it or something like that. But man, what I heard, you were you were at the top of your game. Oh, thanks. So it's a shame that all of a sudden this thing happens and you have nowhere to practice your chops and keep them I know. up. And but it's amazing to me that you can have an act which you've done over and over and over again and actually forget it. That seems amazing to me. I know. Apparently, I'm not alone. So. <sighs> yeah. It's terrible. It's been terrible for comedians. There are uh, certain people like, uh, you know, Robin Williams could go off and do a movie for months and come back and do two hours of stand-up. I think he'd be an exception to that. But. Yeah. Yeah. But he's kind of keeping his chops up just by doing a movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. He's- yeah. Working and- yeah. But uh, on the other hand, this has been a godsend to all the terrible comedians because we don't have to hear from them now. <laughs> you know, if they forgot their act, it's a blessing to all of us. 
Right. There, there never was meant to be this many people doing stand-up. The generic bad comic that we always mention is Perry Kurtz. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> nobody knows who he is, but just look up Perry Kurtz, folks. Uh, you, you, he, um, uh, the fact that he probably can't do comedy anywhere may be a godsend. So. <laughs> Perry. He's still around. He is still around. He's still try, doing his act. I, I went online. He's still there. You know, he's, you know, I mean, you can't blame the guy. You got to give him credit. Hey, he did it. You know, he yeah. kept going. And uh, the only way you survive is you keep going. Hey, guess what? We've run out of time. Uh, well, uh, we're off to a great start, 2021. 2021. Happy 2021, Larry <laughs> Bubbles. Worry, it'll get better, Alex. <laughs> bye, Larry. Bye-bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I always love talking to Larry because uh, he's so he, uh, it makes you feel so good about life, doesn't he? Doesn't he? It's really terrific. Anyway, um, that's Larry, and I just wish there were a way. We got we got to get him. To, I I tried to send him an i give him an iPhone, and I said I'm not going to give it to you until you check out service that you can get. And he's we've got a common friend who who deals in getting service to people, and uh, he just never did it. And it seems half a dozen other people saying, Hey, I've got an old iPhone. You can have it. Ba 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 ba. And he just doesn't want it. He just he he. I think he thinks it'll spoil his um, his uh, what do we call it? his reputation. He wants to keep his reputation up or something like that. Anyway, uh, it is a, it is a Friday, and uh, there are a bunch of people who are waiting right now. And I could keep talking, but then if I do, they'll be pissed off at me because they want to do all the talking anyway. Uh, so uh, let me see here. Here they come. They're all jumping in here. Watch. There's uh, Robert Natale, and there's Trucker Steve. Uh, and Alan uh, is up, but the, he's not there. He, he, but anyway, uh, let me see here. Um, and uh, Charlie Wallace should be joining us any second now. Come on, Charlie. Are you there? Are you there? It's just it's saying joining, 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 joining. Um Okay. Oh, hell. Okay. There we go. Here's Charlie Waltz, but there's no picture, Charlie. Oh, there you are. Okay. And here comes Jeff Stein, and here comes Josh Wheeler. Uh, yeah, we're off to a good start. Uh, and um, hello again, as I say, to Trucker Steve joining us tonight. I, I hope Brian's okay. Usually Brian's always here waiting, and I don't. I, I, I hope he's all right. I'll, I'm going to check in on him later if, he, if I don't hear from him. Um, yeah, uh, Alan, welcome. Turn on your uh, turn on your audio when you get a chance there, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be ready to go. Anyway, uh, how are you all this evening, Mr. Oh, Chairman? I have the minutes from last oh, okay. night's now, meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there are two things we have to do before we start the show. Now, this is going to be probably a regular feature here. I certainly hope not. That we have, and I expect you to take the minutes tonight. Yeah. You know, okay. You, you, well, we'll see well, how you're we, the how we make you're, out. You're, um, you're, you're the secretary at arms. Tonight's minutes are brought to you by Dude Wipes. <laughs> if, you're, if, if you're a dude, you ought to wipe. Yeah. The usual crowd was in attendance last night, minus Brian Neary, which was a good thing for him because the poor bastard always is forced to answer questions about COVID he can't possibly know the answer to, yeah. such as, do I have COVID, Brian? He's too polite to give the real response, which is, how the fuck should I know? Yeah. <laughs> the committee then established that trucker Steve and sidekick Rocky engaged in what will from now on be known as synchronized shitting. <laughs> Meanwhile, throughout the meeting, Alex was A, disgusted with technology, mm -hmm. B, his nose was running, mm -hmm. and C, he was advised to flip his balls over his shoulder in order to ride the Peloton. I'd say it was all of the above. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> he also stood up and asked if he looked fat, but he got no response because the men on the panel had been trained for years never to answer that question. 
Dr. Doom from the Mortuary Committee gave his report. It is suggested by the committee that he be relieved of that duty and given a happier assignment. It, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jason mentioned bull wash present that he received, <laughs> leaving the committee questions about the true meaning of gift giving. <laughs> Notice about Marjorie's farts are stricken from the record in order to keep peace in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kevin gave us a sneak peek at the newest personal hygiene products, such as fresh bowls, fresh breasts, fresh feet, and ass wipes, leaving all on the committee making notes about possible presents for secret Santa gifts in the future. <laughs> the question was raised, is there a difference between tit sweat and armpit sweat? There was no response as there were no tits in attendance. And finally, someone on the chat said this was the worst ramble ever. He's probably not a long time listener we would refer him to what we lovingly call the Civet Cat Chronicles. <laughs> May I get a second so that we can continue to provide quality listening experience? Yeah, yes. I'll Anybody second wanted... that, Robert. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. Okay, thank you very much. That's what went on in our last meeting, and uh, I, uh, I, I would like you to, you know, keep a keep a keep an eye on the show. You know, you're our sergeant at arms. Yes, uh, Jeff. I have one point. Uh, I remember last night that we had a real discussion about the Palatin instrument that you hate because it hurts your ass. Well, the bicycle. Yeah. yeah. The bicycle. Well, it's also it's also because it, it, she's always saying to me, "Well, you know, if you just got on the bike, you know, I always get that one. If you, if you just get on the bike, yeah. Well, if I got on the bike, what I what would happen? I'd be bored for fifteen minutes." You know, well, I did a little research mm -hmm. and I found out there's a sickle made company, sickle mate, which fits on top of your existing device, mm -hmm. which is real puffy. Well, she got and one soft. of those. She got one of those for me, but you got to strap it in and do all of that. It's not like it just slides right on. You know, and then I can slide I, it right off. I know that. Yeah. No. <laughs> but she got me one. It's like it, it almost giving this to somebody is saying to them, boy, have you got a big ass. <laughs> you know. You're a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Pain in a big ass. <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway. So I did. I did some research. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, they have they have fresh balls. Yeah. Oh, wow. And anti monkey butt. And wait a minute. Wait 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 wait, 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 wait. Back off here a second. A anti monkey butt. Yeah, I, I'm like, my camera's not good enough. I can show a picture of it, maybe. What? what, what yeah, but what is what is what is monkey butt? Well, it's it's a it, it's got calamine and talc in it. Oh, and a no, fragrance. My arms are itchy. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and you're supposed to put it on if you're the type of guy that's like a trucker or a horseback rider or something like that, and you get a wet butt. Well, let me let me see here. Somebody wrote me about what calamine. You can buy it. It's on sale on Amazon right now for. I may have uh, lost. Four ninety five a container. Uh, here we go. Diane Weeks wrote me and said calamine. See, people do listen to this show. And react to it, okay? It says, calamine is derived from the Middle English word calamin, which means ore of zinc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that there's your, that, that seems to, be, when you said it had zinc in it or something, that seems yeah. to all fit, you know. But it's just, you know, mom would always bring out the calamine lotion, and it was supposed to make you feel better, I guess. Absolutely. You know, my mom too. Yep. Yeah, everybody's well, mom. Now we go to Charlie Wallace uh, for the <clears throat> daily uh, death statistics. Oh my God! Well, we know the numbers are down. We're only two hundred twenty-one thousand new cases today. Really? Yeah. That's a. That's I'm a, sorry. Two hundred. Yeah, two hundred twenty-one thousand. Well, yeah. the thing is, the, the the deaths always follow the uh, uh, hospitalizations. Yeah. 
because you got the yeah. hospitalizations, which then goes to ICU beds, which yeah. then goes to I, uh, the, you know, the, what do you call it, the intubation. Yeah. And the intubation, about 80% of those die. Yeah, so still 3,500 deaths. So. 3,500 yeah. deaths today? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said it was down. Oh, the infections are oh, down. Infections the are down. infections are down. The deaths are still up. Oh, okay. Now, here in New York, the deaths went down a little bit today. They went up really high yesterday. went up around 202 or something like that. But the, uh, the uh, hospitalizations are down. The percentage of people testing positive has gone way down. It went down like 6-4 for the entire state, okay? Uh, and uh, so, you know, we're, 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 I think we're on the other side of that holiday thing. And it's it's we kind of peaked and now we're starting to come down yeah. a little bit. So, Christmas peak. you know, yeah. But I mean, nevertheless, uh, we got a real problem here in New York, though. And I think it's that everybody does. Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Um, there, they have said that there is going to be. Oh, here comes Brian. Uh, uh, they have said that there uh, by the end of next week they will have run out of vaccine. Uh, and, um, but it, it's, it, it said, uh, like after Thursday, we will have run out of vaccine. So mine's Wednesday. So let's hope and pray <laughs> that I get my shot, you know, but the thing is that it's just, uh, the, it, you know, they keep opening up all these places to give shots, but the problem is, is that they don't have enough stuff to give shots. Right. You Thank know? you, Trump. So, uh, aren't you putting the horse before the cart? So today, it turns out that Mount Sinai, which was offering, hey, you know, get on our list and we'll give you a poke in the arm, uh, suddenly sends a thing to all their people who are supposed to get it in the next couple of days and saying, sorry, we have to cancel your appointment. We don't have any vaccine. <clears throat> and then some woman who talked to a reporter at Channel 2 asks somebody at Mount Sinai, well, what happened? Why? How, how come you don't have the the uh, vaccine, and she said, because the governor took it and re rerouted it, the stuff that was supposed to come to us, to Javits Center, which is one of the big places he's opening up. Now, the, he denies it. He denies that he has appropriated anything, but they, they were saying that. So it, I don't care. Somebody somewhere <laughs> is fucking up, and my health is at stake. Yes, Charlie. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, Austin has already run out. You cannot get the vaccine in Austin. They had some kind of thing that happened here where there was a, a fake run on a place because somebody put a fake item somewhere that a certain place was going to have 10,000 uh, ah. uh, ino uh, vac uh, vaccines yeah. or inoculations, and they were lined up around the block for a thing that did not exist. Mm -hmm. You know? So, so right. I'm home today. Hmm? Hey, Brian. Yeah, I took my mom today to one of the, the super sites. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Big giant ones. Smoothest operation I've ever been to. Really? Beautiful. Really? Yep. Drove you got in. Your shot? They had, yeah, she got her shot. Drove in. It was yours? at the San Mateo Event Center. Mm -hmm. They had a bunch of cones going this way and a bunch of cones going that way. You could get tested to the left and get your shot to the right. We had a piece of paper that said we got an appointment. They said, go to your left. We drove up to a one spot. They uh, told us, roll up your windows, and we talked through the glass. And they said, okay, what's your birth date? Da, 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 da. Held up the license to the window. Okay, go up to that guy with a flag. We drove up to that, and we drove into the building. They stopped us there, checked another ID, checked an appointment put a card on the windshield, never opened the window, drove into the building. They sent us to lane number three. There was like 12, 15 lanes. They took us into a lane. And before she, I could even tell her that she was taking Xarelto blood thinners, they had the shot in her arm and out. She didn't even freaking think about it. She looked and she goes, oh, and they were putting the alcohol on her. And he says, okay, it's done. <laughs> Didn't even, you know, they wrote a time on the card on the windshield. Told her, told now, did, you, did, you, did you have to make an appointment, though? 
Yeah, I made yeah. an appointment the day before. I mm -hmm. got the last appointment mm -hmm. for that day. Yeah. It so happened I got one appointment. Mm -hmm. And um, then they have you drive out of the building. And then they line you up in the parking lot outside in your car. They, they got, got, you know, 15 lanes of different, you know, rows of cars. And you have to sit there for 15 minutes and wait for mm -hmm. any effects. For, 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 for a mom to, to like blow up like a giant blowfish or croaks or whatever yeah and then they yeah. put a num time on the card and then after 15 minutes they start rolling people out do they give you a card for the for the next uh an yeah then they give you cards for the next one and then they give you an app and you you sign her up for the app and then the app sends you uh, a number and, a, and an id and then after about four hours it sends you a text and says, how are you feeling? And, you know, you tell them, mm -hmm. do you have any bruises? Do you got diarrhea? All that stuff. And every, you know, five, six hours for the next few days, they'll send you, an, uh, you know, a how are you doing app. Mm -hmm. And you answer the questions and it sends it back. And then when it comes time for the next one, the next shot, they'll give you a couple of days notice and you can start scheduling the next shot. But you yeah. already get a date for the next shot. Sounds like it's far more... Oh, it's organized organized itself. than it is here i mean totally yeah. organized here to begin with you know um i was mentioning last night you you have to go online to get make your appointment yeah that's they did but yeah. they ask you about 50 questions and this then was they, then they ask people they ask people questions tops yeah take, most of them were who are you take a picture of your of your uh of your medical card not your Medicare, but your medical card, you know, your insurance card, front and back. And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, and I put it in there a couple of times, and then because I had to do this so many times, I said, fuck it, I'm not going to. And I didn't, and it didn't stop me. Let me just go ahead. So they actually didn't need it, okay? But, you know but, 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 I was, all I thought about... I thought, I thought, too, but you know what yes. they asked? They asked, well, who's your insurance? I put Medicare, mm -hmm. and they said, okay, next that's oh, it. Well, they said Medicare. they they said you don't have to have anything, okay? But if you have something, let us know. So I put down I have emblem, so that they knew that I had emblem for my for my uh, uh, prescription. Because then they what they do is they they bill emblem, okay? So they can they stay can get some money back. That's the only reason they do that. Otherwise, you don't really need to have it. Everybody gets the shot for free, whether they. Yeah, you know. she had all the extra stuff, but it didn't. It grayed it all out, so you couldn't even yeah. put it in. You yeah, just put but it in anyway, said, anyway, okay, so next. I, so I felt, so I, I did, the, and I'm saying to myself, you know, if it's some old person, they don't know how to make a picture of their card front and back, nah. and then choose a file to put it in there. I mean, I had to do all that for. Her. Yeah, I mean, make it easy. You know what? What? what how much do you need to know? And then the part I told you that really bothered me was you had all these things where it said, do you do this? Are you this? Are you this? Are you that? Are you a worker in a whatever? Are you... And the only one I had to go yes to was 75 and over. But I had to go all the no's, too, as I was doing. Just to have a row of yeses, and you just go yes on the items that pertain to you. But, I mean, it was just, it was maddening. And that was crazy because I thought I thought I was going to have to do all that, and it yeah. literally took. Uh, if it took me five minutes to register up and get an appointment, it was five minutes too long. Well, when I finally got it, okay, when I finally got it, uh, 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 just one second later, boom, you've got an appointment. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and oh, okay. uh, and then I get a message at home saying you got an appointment. By the way. The day of, you're going to get an email from us. You have to go online, answer a few more questions. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I didn't even get that. Yeah, and and then th up. and then what we'll do is send you a uh, one of those uh, QR codes, and then you can show the QR code at the uh, at the uh, place. Yeah, where you get the I shot. was amazed how easy it was. And I imagine once you got the QR code, they just scan that and they give you the shot and you go. You know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, rub it in my face. Yeah. Okay, if you want me to. All right. All right. Uh, Alan. So, two two points. Yeah. One is I'm hoping the whole group in a month is talking about their side effects from them getting the vaccine. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. And I think that a lot of us will be getting it uh, with the new administration. And the second thing is, is yesterday, somebody that was on the show that I'd never seen talking about going out in the fresh air, no mask needed, 
And I'm happy, Alex, that you shut him down on that. Yeah. I mean, you did it nicely. Oh. That's just yeah. totally wrong. You get out in the open air, you still need a mask. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it was a lady two two cars two car one car one row over and two cars back that had some kind of reaction because all of a sudden, the paramedics showed up at the car be, behind us and they held everybody up from leaving. Yeah, well, that's great. They were pulling her out of the car. Yeah. Right on. Well, all they got to do is give her a shot from an EpiPen. And well, it depends on what it was. There yeah, was no epi yeah. It could have been. It, it could have been something other than the shot that was. Yeah, you know, could have been something um, else. You know, right. uh, Brian. That was Jason. Just, just remind him that the Rose Garden. Remember the Rose Garden situation when they did the. Yeah. You know, bringing in the lady for the Supreme Court. Yeah, all those people got infected. Now it's outside. Yeah, they were outside. Uh, number Brian. number two outside. is. Sorry, I wasn't on last night. Did I miss anything? No, not at all. <laughs> So well, my friend, my well, all I, all I'm, I'm not telling you what you missed, Brian, but I'm just saying, if your balls ever start to smell, don't blame us. I know which episode to listen to. So here, one of my <laughs> friends who's on here, and we've been friends from the show. Yeah. Where were you on the show Thursday? It was very interesting. Alex was always talking about his runny nose and his balls hanging down. He said he was laughing the whole show, though. He said it was very good. So I listened to it. While I was playing basketball with Simon, yeah. trying to listen and play, and yeah, it was yeah very interesting. It was all summed up in the minutes tonight. Yeah. yeah. It, it, by the way, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we we could call it the demonetization show. We could retitle <laughs> it from the ramble to demonetization. Uh, by the way, by the way, uh, oh yeah, yes, yeah. So I was very happy today. To find out yeah. that on February third, mm -hmm. I'm getting shot. Yeah, yeah, right on. Unless they run out of it. Well, you know, I mean, it, it, the it, governor said we've got enough stuff. Well, I, I'm just hoping that we'll you know that the the, the the mayor is correct and they have enough to get us through Thursday, mm -hmm. because that'll take care of me, and the next day it'll take care of Shecky. What you, you know? <laughs> but what? Charles. Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley last night said all the athletes should get it before anybody else. All the basketball <laughs> players, because because they pay more taxes than anybody. That's what yeah, he's of course. Saying. You know something? It, 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 what an asshole! Yep. <laughs> what an asshole! You know I, what happened was is our mayor, our governor is so proud. He said we held had, had a Buffalo Bills uh, uh, game. The other day, mm -hmm. he said they didn't do too well, but uh, we had a game. And so we've been managed to open up sports. And I'm thinking, is that your only priority? Yeah. I'd say you, you might try opening up, oh, say, the New York Met, <laughs> you know, something cultural. I mean, what, all of a sudden, it's, well, we got well, at least we got the Bills playing again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and you probably got a lot of vaccine over at the Javits Center. Now, will you help Mount Sinai, please? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, hmm. But, um, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's it's life in the time of COVID, you know. And, what do you expect from Charles Barkley? He's a Republican. I know. Is, yeah, he, a, is he a Republican? Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, he's a Republican. See, I don't know. I, when it comes to sports people, I just don't know what their life is like. So he's a Republican. Why is he a Republican? This black guy. He's he, how can you be black rich. and be a Republican? So huh? is anybody irritated or, or amazed at the fortification of the Capitol right now? Yeah. Is that I'm something irritated else? That, it's, that it has to be that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want it to be that way. There's more troops over there right now than there was over in, you know, Afghanistan yeah. a yep. couple of months ago. Well, I have a why? A why certain, do we? Why? Yeah. Why? Why do we have to do that? I mean, well, I, I know it's Trump. disgusting. No, but I have I have a, a a point here to make on that. All right, and that is that I don't know if if it it's a good thing to do it simply because I don't know that anything's going to happen. First of all. But secondly, because you're giving all those people that did attack the Capitol a great deal of, uh, of uh, oh, let's say, an ego boost when you start bringing out all these troops. Because you're saying, well, we made them afraid. You know, well, I don't know. It's partially that we, true. Yeah. And, it's, and it's keeping people away from, a, a, you know, the, the, the inauguration. 
you know, yeah. that's part of it too. And it's, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of irritated with it mm-hmm. in a way. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I understand I, why they're doing it, but it, it I don't know. Well, it's, it's, it's bothering me as much as it is everybody getting there, you know, seeing these shots go in people's arm every night, you know? Yeah. Seeing, seeing the fortification like that is. I wonder, I I'm wondering at what Pence feels right now about Trump. Because the story came I out today. I think they should put that fucker in a straight jacket, put him in a dump truck, and send him down the road, and forget the red carpet. And either that or put him in a helicopter. He wants a twenty-one gun salute. And drop him on the other side of D.C. and see how much that black vote gets him. Yeah, he wants a twenty-one gun salute, but we didn't say where the guns were going to be aimed. Yeah. How would yeah. they shoot him? He's, he's holding a rally on the twentieth. You know. Yeah. Really? Where? Where? 21 gun salute. I don't know where, but he's holding his own rally on the 20th. Who wants the 21 gun salute? Trump or, or Pence? Trump. Trump. He Trump. wants a red carpet. I'll, 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 I'll take one of the rifles and aim it wherever he's standing <laughs> after he's president. Supposedly he's leaving <clears throat> that morning about 9 o'clock for mar a He just doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. He wants every last inch of publicity because once he gets on that plane, America starts to forget him. Okay? Uh, Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have the platform. And uh, a lot of people will just ignore him. They won't won't give him the press. You know. Uh, He thought that he might, when he left the presidency, go back and do The Apprentice again. (laughs) I'm sorry. NBC ain't going to do The Apprentice again. All right? I'm hoping nobody hurts him in mm-hmm. the meantime, because that'll make a martyr out of him. Well, I, you know, I don't wish harm on him. Right, neither do I. I wish, I wish a lifetime of people ignoring him. Yeah, that would be great. You know, that would be worse <clears throat> than death for him. Right? Is that anywhere? Uh, is, let's go to our legal expert on this. Uh, Josh, uh, uh, is there anything in the Constitution where he can be ignored? <laughs> I think well, in, like, in his golf, well, you mean, or what is, is there any kind of is there an amendment where we can ignore him? Um, remove him if they want yeah. by various ways, but no one seems that would be section four, and that would mean Pence would have to have balls. No one seems very eager to do that. Well, see, I agreed with somebody who said that the reason we shouldn't have gone for the 25th Amendment is it's not a punitive, it's not a punitive amendment. It's not right. meant to punify, pu- to uh, penalize somebody. Uh, it is simply meant to take somebody out of the presidency who is not fit to hold the office, mm-hmm. you know, uh, becomes incapacitated for one reason or another or whatever. Uh, and that, you know, impeachment is the best idea. You know, he's already been impeached, so he goes down in history now. I mean, mm-hmm. you got to be, people are going to look at the history of the United States and say, boy, that guy must have really been an asshole to get impeached twice in four years. So yeah, he, if he if he was uh, 25th Section 4 out, he would still be able to run again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, no, the, the yeah, but I mean, but the 25th doesn't remove you permanently. No. No, it's I mean, just it's just meant if you're incapacitated, only, right? Yeah, like, I mean it only removes you until the process by which you were removed is reversed, and then you know you take back all your duties. So, in other words, you get I mean the, you really get, what what should have happened is they could have used the Twenty Fifth Amendment to temporarily remove him, and then they could have impeached at the same time. Mm-hmm. And he would have had no way to basically ruin anything else in the meantime. Okay. But if they you know, if they twenty fifth him out and then his his duty ended, wouldn't he be out? Well, right then it would. I mean, yeah. if his term expires, I mean they they could have done that. Yes, I mean they could have kept him out of power these last you know fourteen. 16 days, whatever yeah. it amounted to uh, after the 6th. Uh, that was on the 6th, right? So he, yeah, would yeah, still be able to, he would still be able to run so, again? So, well, he would have then, yes, but like I okay. was saying, but they still could have impeached as well, the same as they already well, let did. Me, let, I mean, me, let me ask you this. It was possible to have oh, accomplished. Oh, okay, I get you. I Josh, get you. let me ask you this, though. 
Um, uh, they say he can't run again, but don't they have to specify that as one of the determinations of the? Yeah, it's a separate vote. Yeah. I separate mean, yeah. vote. You know, yeah. it'll have to come. It, it can only come yeah. after a conviction, and right. it's a separate vote. It's kind however, of it's kind of like the sentencing verdict. Yeah, but, in, yeah. but however, the the expulsion vote, if that's the right term, um, is only a simple majority simple vote. Simple majority, so it only takes yeah. right? People. Uh, you know, I mean, if he's expelled, that will be a naturally easy. Yeah. I mean, that'll be a formality. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. imagine that'll take very long. And I mean, there's a lot of this nonsense out there about how long it has to take and some of these things. I mean, it, it doesn't have to take. There's, there's oh. constitutionally, there's no requirement for how long the trial is or what the trial is or the form of the trial or this, that, or the other. It's decided by the Senate. I mean, if the Senate really yeah. wanted him out, Mm -hmm. They could, could, could call, call themselves into session. They could amend their rules pretty easily and then just be done with it. I mean, but it takes McConnell to have huevos and go out there and right. just start it tomorrow, yeah. finish it up. But no one wants to do that. I'm, Instead, I'm, what they want to do is they want to surround the Capitol with 25,000 people with guns so that an average everyday tax paying law abiding citizen can't get on a train and go to their nation's capital. And witness which, an inauguration. I which mean, which in reality you know, would be a great I mean, time to do it because they're covered, and if anything happens, they could be doing it. Right. I mean that. Well, that you know, seems I mean, to be the the uh, solution, and we can we can bemoan that right now, jo uh, Josh. But the fact of the matter is that we wouldn't have had a normal uh, uh, one anyway uh, because of the COVID thing. I mean, we wouldn't have been able well, to have something where people are in close and everything. I mean, that, that may be true, but you know, it is still your right and your privilege to attend something such as that. But you know, the, the fact of it is that, you know, a person like you or I, or really any of these people is not allowed to walk down the street with any sort of distance, you know, at all and see a presidential inauguration and to see the trans, you know, the peaceful transfer of power, because our own government thinks that there might not be a peaceful transfer of power. That's the problem. They yeah. obviously have a fear that something will happen to disrupt that transfer, or there wouldn't be twenty five thousand heavily. Let, armed let me let, let me dip into surrounding it. Let me dip into paranoia here for a second. How many of you honestly believe? There was some kind of a plot to subvert the government in this whole oh, thing. Oh yeah, I mean, Definitely. organized plot. In other words, these people didn't just organized. go. Organized, yes, they came with ropes and, and things to scale walls, That's right. with, with lead mm. pipes, and mm. yeah, it was organized. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is, is that, that yeah, that that it, it seems to be that it was that the the I don't know how many. 5,000, 10,000 people that were marching down there were kind of a cover for the people who wanted to do some real bad. And uh, there's, a, there's one woman who was, they have a, a video of her in the window yelling through a bullhorn, if you go to the left, that's where Nancy Pelosi yeah. is. Yeah. So they had already stalked out the, the Capitol. In fact, it turns out they may have been aided and abetted by a congressman. Yep. Or a couple of congressmen. Several. Yeah. Inside job. What? what you Inside say? job. Inside job, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They um, also said that uh, that black guy that I think is a freaking hero, that black guy was guiding them, oh, that oh, they, he was baiting wow. all those guys. Yes. The, they, were, they were getting too close to They were getting to ready Pence. to go take a right and go down towards the Senate. Where all those where people Pence were hiding. No, yeah. there were, they were too near where Pence was being held. Yeah. So yeah, he, well, that's, well, that was a so where he, Senate was. He just, you and know. He, they were, he was guiding them upstairs the opposite direction. But I had to yeah. think when I watched that. He was poking I had to think. I had to, I had to think as I watched that going on originally, and then in the aftermath when we found out why he did it, yeah. that those demonstrators had to be the stupidest human beings on the face of the it planet. Was, it was funny as hell when you find out what what he was doing. Yeah, because they bit. They you know, they he's pu like he's a, pushing, he don't like come up here, don't or... come this way, get out of here. No, you're not yeah. allowed up here. Well, we're coming. Yeah. Oh, okay, keep coming. And then he backs, he goes into this hallway and all of a sudden there are a whole rush of cops coming in behind him. It was yeah. hilarious. 
put the black guy in front of the 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 the, the, uh, the white supremacist. Well, I think they they've already said they think uh, that he should get a medal uh, a medal of freedom or whatever. I think he medal, should medal of honor, yeah. medal of honor. honor or something. Yeah, I think he should. Yeah, I mean there were some there were some very brave people in that whole thing, but it's just interesting how calculated in the, in the aftermath. You, you, when you saw it going on, you thought it was just chaos and whatever. But then when they suddenly had video like of a line of people all wearing the same outfit, kind of just snaking their way up the stairs, you know, yeah. you knew that this was a... They, they had planned for this. They had worked for this. They had uh, uh, trained for this. I think training Some is... Some of them is didn't have a say. clue of where they were going either. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you see the lawyer for the guy who threw the, the fire extinguisher and he hit the cops? Yeah. He was on oh, Cuomo yeah. tonight. He was trying to defend his guy. Well, we know what he did, but and he just kept trying to go around. It was so hilarious. He was just trying to put out a fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He kept saying, yeah. Well, another, hear, another, Trump, another. Trump's fire. on uh, Morse code now. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke signal. One Congress lady from Colorado was texting the insurgents, telling them, hey, Nancy Pelosi's not here. Don't look for her here. Really? Yeah. Alan. So I get um, a daily update from a magazine I subscribe to called Police Magazine. Uh, I get a monthly issue, but they send me daily. So uh, four police officers that were off duty from Texas, they didn't say where, were there and yep. armed in the Capitol illegally. They are now fired and being indicted by the U.S. Justice system, some kind of people. Uh, I just just saw something on my phone. An Oakland police officer has just been suspended for being there. They had a one of the one of the there was a a firefighter from somewhere in the south, a fire captain that was there and threw a fire extinguisher and hit somebody was, with it. Didn't, that was the guy. Didn't hit the cop. That wasn't the one that hit the that hit the police officer that killed him. Uh, he threw it at somebody else. Imagine that, a firefighter throwing a fire extinguisher. That that was the guy, that, that was the lawyer who was on tonight. Oh, he was it? The guy who, yeah, he, he <laughs> threw it, and it, there was a bunch of cops there, and luckily they hit, you know, they had helmets on, and they hit. And it bounced guy, off of lawyers, several of them. Yeah. yeah, and the lawyer said, oh, and it was empty. You can't, you have to, you have to look at the, him as a character. He never got in trouble before. And it's oh like, what God. the hell? So you can go shoot somebody as long as you never got in trouble before. You're That's okay. Right. Well, because no, as you I'm know, as you, as, as, as you right. know, uh, it, legally you have uh, you have uh, you have one person you can <laughs> kill before they come after you. Yeah. Alex, you got one. Then let's go, man. Yeah. <laughs> let's do something. <laughs> <clears throat> Sad day in law enforcement and for firefighters. Military personnel. Hey, listen for Olympic swimmers. For Olympic swimmers, and yeah, uh, Olympic. <laughs> you know yeah. what? What amazes yeah. me is these people had no. Hey, nobody will know we were here. Yeah, you're wearing you're wearing you're wearing <laughs> yeah. buffalo horns on your head, and your face is painted up, and you're wearing a loincloth, and you don't hey, think anybody's going to recognize you. Well, that and that they, guy's defense. His his lawyer said that he was sent there by the president. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there were a bunch of people shouting that. Well, he he did a a tweet saying, "Mr. President, pardon me." <laughs> yeah, I was only doing uh, your bidding. Pardon me, Mr. President. <laughs> he hasn't well, been convicted. You know, got to be convicted the, before. Wait, the wait, problem, wait, wait. Yeah, the problem we got now is that all these guys have been working in the woods for a long time. <clears throat> and yeah. what's going to happen is they're probably going to go back into the woods and what you know the fbi and all these other guys have got to do is go back and watch these guys in the woods and start taking them out when they're in the woods well so you know they don't come you, back out you know the, the the fact of the matter is these people are not going to stop okay they're, well. they're militias that are building in the woods and they've been doing yeah. it for a long time and they finally came out and, and have and anywhere and have we been able to find anybody who was part of Antifa? <laughs> no, yeah, oh, the, one of them are, the, right? The, the one thing where they found more than anything else were white supremacists. 
Yep. Or, you know. Now a lot of you know a lot of the people there, especially the people who were still outside, were just you know dumb, stupid Trump followers. You know, and they weren't there to tear the Capitol down. But there were enough that went in there. I don't know. How many people got inside? Is there any estimate how many wound up inside? I don't know. Hundreds. Um, it looks like hundreds. At least hundreds, yeah. Like thousands, man. Well, yeah, I've heard, well, uh, you know, Trump during the during the speech said, you know, there's hundreds of thousands out there. And then it slowly dwindles down to thousands. And then, you know, the the doors got kicked down and then it's, you know, a couple hundred and, you know, the, the numbers change depending on what the situation is. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I just, it's just, we, we live in sad times. You know, what's interesting. What I, I I'm have, getting a feeling of something here. We had about, uh, we had a nice huge amount of people here uh, and it has gone down a bit since we started talking the politics I think people, uh, and about this whole thing, and people are just exhausted. Tired. They are just exhausted. You know, it's going to be so nice starting Thursday when I don't have to spend the whole day caring what the president did. You know? Uh, and, uh, yes, uh, John. Um, I, I think it was um, some pundits were saying, it, you know, it, it might not be a good idea to put him on trial because then... He's going to be, you know, doing news conferences every day. You know, it might be better just to fucking let him go and forget about him and just zero, don't give him any, just starve him of any media. Well, they should have hey. done that. They sh Look, you know, we talk about the Republicans who've been so terrible in this whole thing and they did, haven't, haven't chastised him and they've aided and abetted him. But you know who aided and abetted Trump as well? The press. Yeah. I sure. mean, they, he, yeah. he ran the cheapest, Fox. when he ran for president, he ran the cheapest election of all time yeah. it all, because he was getting so much free publicity, he didn't have to buy it. Yeah. You know? And Even bad publicity, it's still good publicity. It's like, um, yeah. what did uh, Bela Lugosi said in that movie when when uh, the guy comes through goes, he's OD'd on heroin, and he goes, yeah, but, you know, what, 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 why are you letting the press in? And he goes, oh, Eddie, any press is good, you know? That's Trump. He doesn't care. Yeah, you know? well, you know, I mean, the point is that it 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 was the press mm -hmm. that made him, that created yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, he was the Victor, they were the Victor Frankenstein of the monster. You know, they pulled yeah. the switch that let the electricity in. If they hadn't given him the kind of publicity they did, which they only did because he was good copy, as they call it in the business, <clears throat> you know, I think we'd be, we would have been a lot better off. But the guy knew how to play the press, you know. It was all the way back to the 80s, you yeah. know. Yeah. I remember back in the 80s, you know. I mean, it was like, who is this idiot? Why even, Why is he Is he even in the news, you know? Well, you know. Uh, it was on TV. Yeah. All the time, I mean, right? They followed the show there for a couple of years. Yeah, Alex, Alex, on Thursday, you could invite Trump to be here. Yeah. And we could all get our barf bags out. <laughs> well, let me ask you, let me ask you, here's a good, good, good topic. If I, let's say I managed to call down to Mar-a-Lago and say, listen, I know nobody wants to talk to you, but I'm willing to put you on my stingy little podcast, okay? Um, um, would you come on? And he'd go, sure. Or he'd zoom in or whatever. Right. Yeah. I don't want him near me because he may be infected. Uh, uh, what question would you guys each individually ask him? Like, Robert, what would you ask? What would be your question? Well, I would ask him. I, I would talk to him about what he claims are all these accomplishments of his mm -hmm. and try to pin him down on what exactly did that entail? You know, his wall, well, that's not a fact. You know, the, the mm -hmm. business about him building all that wall. The business about him saving millions of people from COVID, it's just not a fact. Nothing that other reporters, some other reporters, haven't tried to nail him down on. Mm -hmm. What he's very good at is avoiding the question to begin with if he doesn't like it, or he just talks over you to kind of bully his way you know, past your question, mm -hmm. but I would do the best I could to try to put his feet to the fire. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, 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 Alan, what would you ask him? Uh, I would ask him if he was a true racist or it was just for the media. And we would never get an honest answer either way, but, you know, I believe he's a true racist. I don't think he's... I would I, ask him. I, I, don't, would ask. I don't think he thinks he's a racist. You know, I really don't. All he's got to do is watch himself on uh, TV. Well, he's a very deluded human being. You think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, what would you ask him? I wouldn't waste my time. He would just <laughs> lie. He would lie. Come on, you got your one chance. What would you... It wouldn't do any good. He would just lie. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, let me see here. Uh, Jeff, I'll get to you. Where are you going to live? Where are you going to live? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Panama. Panama. Because I don't want to live there. <laughs> Josh, what would you ask him? <clears throat> I wouldn't spend any time... You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you if you see, you had a chance to ask Trump. the guy one question, what would you ask him? I have nothing to ask, Trump. Well, <laughs> what about? type of ball wash he uses? <laughs> Steve? Uh, where would my punch hurt the most? What? Say that again? Where would my punch hurt the most? Where would your punch uh, hurt the punch. most? Good one, good one. Yeah. Kevin? <laughs> I'm the same. I wouldn't ask him shit. Okay. A lot of people don't want to talk to him. How about you, Brian? Bullshit. Who has the P-tapes? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, John? I'd ask him if he'd like to buy a time sharing in, in Kazakhstan. <laughs> Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, right. Yeah. Um, what would I ask him? Gee, I don't know. I, I mean... You, you, you can't get a a question out with that guy right when you start well, going into it he doesn't let you fit like robert's saying he doesn't let you finish or if he does he, he, he well he does what he does is he has a tendency to over answer any question to try and run out the clock okay. you know there's no such thing as a sh short interview with him because you ask him a question and then you got to sit back and wait for about 10 minutes till he's finished answering it because he figures the more time he spends Answering it is the less time that you have to be able to nail him on something. Corporate tactic. Yeah. I think it would be a horrible interview to do. I think I, I would actually, about in the middle of asking him the question and not having him answer it, just hang up on him. You know, because, I mean, I just, uh, I, I often said to myself when I saw like, I saw Chris Wallace interview him, and Chris Wallace, I felt so sorry for the guy, because as a guy who has done interviews, I feel sorry for people who are doing interviews with people who are making it very difficult to do an interview. And I felt sorry for him. And uh, I then felt sorry for, I, I trying to remember who else did an interview with him next, and he did the same thing. And I just went, oh, I know, it was whoever, they had that debate or something, or the town hall that he did. Mm -hmm. And I can't oh, remember. Yeah. I can't remember who hosted oh, yeah. it, and I just felt yeah. so sorry for her because it, she just couldn't tame the beast. You know, there was no way of shutting him down, and mm -hmm. I think it's because people, you know, it's like when Hillary was doing the debate with him, and he kind of was, tra you know, trailing her around the the hall, yeah. the, the, the the dais. Uh, I wanted. I I felt she could have won that election just by turning around and saying. Donald, stop it. And, or saying, huh? even worse, you should have just said, just back off, you freak. You creep, you know? yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I think Biden won a lot of people over when he just simply said, can you get this guy to shut up or something yeah. or whatever he said. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was an honest, uh, it was an honest approach. You <laughs> might be able to get Pence here easier than Trump. Yeah, well, Pence, you know, I, there's part of me that is not mad at Pence. I'm going to tell you why. And I know you, I, Charlie will probably disagree with this. Uh, he was vice president. What's the vice president job? To be the apologist for the president, you know, to, to stand up for what the, what the White House is doing. He's part of the team. And I think as a team player, 
he was a he was a good team player. He wasn't playing on our team, but he was playing on Trump's team. I think in the last couple of weeks, and not because he's trying to you know make his legacy better. I think he just got sick and tired of all of this. And when finally he was stuck in a room with the Trump idiots at the door trying to lynch him, I think he said, that's it. He, you know? It took that, you know, stop and think about it. It took that, you know, mm -hmm. like a like four inches from the goal line and suddenly he decides he's had enough. Well, you have I'm to sorry. admit, you, no, but, but, no but, but you, you have to admit it was overkill. Okay, what Trump did. It was overkill. It took it beyond anything he had ever done before. Yeah, he had to he had to follow the constitution and he did. He did a very nice job of it and he you know, I mean, he had to sit there and add up the votes and one of them was for Pence, you know. And yeah. and he had to do the job Al Gore did. Okay? Uh and it's it, it, it just like Al Gore did a nice job of it. I think Pence did a nice job of it too. Now we can say where was he all these years, but I don't think it ever got to. What can we call? It? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it, it didn't get to the the point that it got to this time with that speech in Washington, and and the res resulting yeah. effect of it. Okay, I mean Trump could have just as easily there said, "Okay, everybody, listen." Let, we didn't win this one, but we'll win the next one. Okay, everybody go home and start getting people together to vote for, you know, the, the Republican in your neighborhood and send them on their merry way. But instead he said, let's march down the street. I'll march with you. Uh -huh. And then he, yeah. like the coward that he is, he turned around and went home. Yeah. You know, uh, I, it was just... Um, I, I, think, I think that Pence was really scared. He had no Secret Service protection in the Capitol building, and people got really close to him, and they, he was really scared that he was going to be hurt or worse. And his family was with him. Yes, yeah, exactly. his family. That, when they took correct. him away. And in yeah, all of this, in all of this, the person who he had been protecting all these years didn't Wouldn't call him to say, call. are you okay? Right. Nothing. Wouldn't the only thing I... The only thing I remember of Pence is those those conferences with him outside the White House and saying, oh, Mr. President, here's an update, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for letting us put this group to get together, Mr. President. And it was just make me throw up. He was a perfect puppet. Well, yeah. I, I, am I right or wrong? But except for going down to Georgia to campaign for the Republican candidates down there, has Pence shown up with Trump at any of these other rallies recently? Yeah. No. Has he? I don't think no. so. No, I don't think so either. But I think they definitely have had a, had a falling out the last week or yeah. so. There was no question about that. They said I they think, didn't talk to each other. I, I think it all started when he gave the elbow bump to uh, to Biden. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He gave it. What was that? Was that? Um, I forget when he gave that to her. The the. Uh, What's the name of his funeral yeah. or something? I know and you know the it's elbow bump to Pence, it, and it, then it's interesting. But we have we have lost uh, quite a few people when, once we started talking about the politics. I think everybody's kind of tired of it. But the thing is that um, uh, it's going to get better. You know, I think uh, you know Pence has invited uh, uh, Kamala Harris to come to the Naval Observatory so he mm -hmm. can give her the tour around. I mean. He's doing the right thing now that it's all over. But you know that, uh, oh, I just got this item. I, I saved it, and I'm, I'm glad I just remembered it because it's worth talking about for a second. Uh, I get this thing called All Access, which is a, a, uh, a broadcast news sheet every day. And um, do you know who Cumulus is? Cumulus is a, yeah. uh, is a, is a radio company. Uh, right. Probably losing more money than any other radio company. They're not. They don't do that well. But, but they do have on their stations basically right wing talk show hosts. Yeah. And they put a memo out the other day telling their talk show hosts to stop spreading falsehoods about the presidential election. Uh, and it's turning out it's being roundly ignored by their hosts. Surprise. Uh, and I started looking at what they're saying, you know, and they're saying, uh, 
uh, oh, you know, uh, but there's so many states where there, something was done wrong and uh, uh, still in dispute, says Mark Levin. Um, uh, one guy, Dan Bongino. Bon, Bon Gino? Yeah. Bon Gino. <laughs> where is he? Where does he work? Parlor, dude. He's on, he's on Fox, but he's got a radio show, too. He's got he says, a parlor. We had an election too. with unbelievably suspect behavior. What suspect behavior? Yeah. Yeah, right. You know, they really believe this. Either that or they're just saying it. This is their excuse. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, asserting that we will continue to question the election. Get over it. Come yeah, on. Who are you going to question? Wait, what are you, you going to question? Six million more votes? <laughs> you know? What are you going to question? Uh, th over 300 electoral college votes? Come on. Time time to just man <clears throat> up, you know? I, I, I heard Trump wants like a, a, a gun, a, you know, a 21 gun salute when he's leaving at, the, at Andrews Air Force Base and a, a big red carpet, you know, with the military all saluting him. Mm -hmm. I hope nobody shows up. Just a couple of people flipping him off. Present you know? arms. Yeah. <laughs> So Brian, feel this was the 9/11. That was the 9/11. Remember, he gave him the fist bump. Yeah. 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 When Biden and Pence, and I think that's when Trump started separating because right when you see that, it's like well, Trump, loyalty. You know, you know I, Yo, I, I, I what I would be, what Brian, I'll be, what? I was just telling Brian. I said even even on my way home tonight, you know, here we are, how many weeks away, and I'm driving home even tonight. At Cochrane mm -hmm. Road, those mm -hmm. idiots were still up on the bridge, screwing oh, up traffic. Friday night, usually mm -hmm. you can drive right on through, and they're still up there with their Trump flags over the overpass on the freeway, stopping traffic. Stop Jeez. the steal. Well, maybe they just have nothing left to do with their miserable Gavin, kids lives. up there. They got everything. Gavin, you live in Hollister. Doesn't everybody own a sniper rifle in Hollister? Pretty much. Pick up trucks and flags on the back. That's right. Stop your truck. Right. Get out. And send oh, they got the bird when I went by. But... <laughs> uh, the, um, Throw a uh, fire. I a new fire name. John? I got a new name for those uh, huh. Trump supporter terrorists. Y'all Qaeda. <laughs> yeah, Y'all Qaeda. Y'all Qaeda? <laughs> in, in San Francisco on Monday, the, the, the police had the uh, barricades up around the whole Twitter building, you know. And I always go over there to get a cup of coffee at the Starbucks across the street. And there was a, nobody there, you know, just the cops. And I said, well, what are you guys expecting, a protest? And they're like, ah, you never know. And nobody showed up. Do you, know, you, you do know that the Twitter building used to be the Live 105 building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's where our yeah, studios right. used to be. That was the Furniture Mart. Yep, yeah. that that's a beautiful room? building. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an old Art Deco building. It's really nice. What happened to all the furniture companies? Did they all go belly up? They gone. It's just all Twitter, and there's a there's a grocery store there too called Super High End Expensive Groceries. Really? Because that yeah. that building was we we our studios. It was the worst studios I've ever worked in in my life. The program director's office was right over a vent, and pigeons would come into the vent and shit on his desk. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Right in that we finally moved to very nice quarters eventually, but at, at that point, at the very beginning, when I first got that job, I hadn't seen the studio. I never went by the studio because we didn't want anybody to know that I was negotiating. Okay, and so finally, one day, I finally go to the studio, and I leave the place, and I had a cell phone in those days, car phone actually they called them in those days. And I immediately called my business manager and I said, I can't work there. I said, that place is a dump. He said, well, you don't have any other options right now. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I'll put up with the dump. And it turned out we had a lot of fun in that dump. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but that was, that was the furniture mart. That's where Twitter is now. You, you never give us a homework assignment. I think for the weekend we ought to try and find a bicycle seat. It has a slot in the middle to protect your balls. Uh, I think you could do better things with your weekend. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I you like know, uh, uh, after the show's over in about seven minutes, I release you all from your duties for the week. <laughs> you know, 
you know, except that, of course, you know, Robert has the problem of getting together the minutes from this show. But. Tonight's are too depressing. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you, we got to do something uh, happier. Talking about it. <laughs> oh, man, my, my, my chest is, I'm short of breath tonight. No, you, you don't have to. It's, it, it, it's raining outside is what it is. And I, I, I hear react. it's nice. Oh, really? Yeah, really? It's like, yeah. 76 degrees today. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, what's that like? You know, what's, nice. what's, the, nice. what's the outside <laughs> like? You know, I haven't gone outside because I don't want to take any chances. I'm I'm close to the finish line, okay? Yeah. Right. You know, right. we all are, actually. Sure. Yeah. So, Josh, what are you going to do this weekend? You're going to go down to the inauguration, are you? It's not no, good. no. I mean, you guys knew, you know, that we had planned to go. but I know. I mean, they can't go anymore. I mean... Well, I mean, have I you, guess technically you, you can, but not really. But, I mean, have you gone before? Not to an inauguration, no. I've been to D.C. Hmm. multiple times. Um, been at the Capitol and all that, but uh, no, I've never been to an inauguration. I think, so. I think would have been, I would have liked to have gone to, like, uh, Obama's inauguration because that was very historic, you know. Um I think that would have been a good one. Wait a minute. Somebody wrote here a story today. The My Pillow guy visited the Oval Office today with a plan to still overturn the election. Yep. Yeah. They really? could see his notes. Yeah. Huh? No way. Yeah. I mean, the guy's a Republican, but I mean. No, he's an asshole. Okay, yeah. well, good. I won't be buying his pillows. Do you Republican think, doesn't come into it. My He's an qu- asshole. My question Those is, are is anyway. Mike Slidell or something like that? Yeah, Mike Slidell. Is he, is he, do you think he's? it's hurting his business? I hope so. Or, or are they He's just not getting any of my money. That's people, right. I mean, where is it? But to begin with, you know, he, he used to be a heroin addict. He advertises on Fox. He used to be a heroin addict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And Anytime, he, got, God. he got nailed by the Better Business Bureau, too, for... Uh, not supporting his uh, his return policy. Right? Oh really? Oh really? Wow. Oh yeah, big time. He got he got an F from the BBB. Oh my my! <laughs> I don't know anybody that's ever got an F from BBB. Um, whereas Fresh Balls, on the other hand, <laughs> Fresh <laughs> Balls one. has is is triple A rating, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think Balls so. com. Huh? Freshballs dot com. Freshballs dot com. Yeah, and the Better Business Bureau, the BBB, stands for balls, 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 <laughs> and more balls. This is what happened uh, last night, Josh. This was the show last night. See what you miss when you're sleeping. We missed Not, everything, and it was yeah, Kevin. And by the way, by the way, Josh, let me just say this: it was Kevin's fault. It's all my fault. <laughs> Actually, Not, Jason uh, started. I it. came on late. Not my kind of show, I guess. <laughs> Well, I was watching uh, Titans, Titans on HBO Max. Well, that's, that's a good show. I used to watch yeah, it. Yeah, very when, good show. I, I watched yeah. it when it was on DC Universe. Ah. That's where it first started. You mean the, the mm. live the live action show of Titans? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I think Titans terrific. And so is, uh, if, you, if you watched, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Oh, Warrior. Huh? <laughs> War- well, I Warrior, watched the Warrior, first Warrior. episode of Warrior. This is not very good. <laughs> It's not very good, but no. Yeah, well, now now when you get twelve-year-old, fourteen-year-old, yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the other show was I watched on DC, and I forget it now. But it's another. Hmm. They have two seasons of that there too. I'll, ah. When I remember it, I'll let you know. But I'm, you know, I don't remember the things much anymore. It, Tiffany likes the superhero stuff. She loves that stuff. Yeah. Well, there was a uh, what was what, that's why she married you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, good to my hey, very good. <laughs> Why don't I have the, the, what, the, uh, the what a like, suck. like one guy's made of metal, and I'm trying to remember the name of the show. God damn it! God damn it! It's a good show too. You got three minutes. Oh well, well I'm, I won't remember it in the three minutes. Um, no, one guy's made out of iron, and Iron uh, Man. No, iron Man. No, not Iron Man. This is uh, he's uh, he's played by. Uh, God damn it! I care. I'm terrible with names tonight. Uh, I hate Rose. Welcome to your sixties. Welcome you to, huh? Yeah, yeah. 
No, the minutes failed to include how we all learned that Stevie Wonder, no, nah, never mind. <laughs> well, Stevie Wonder knows when he's finished wiping his Friction. ass. I, I asked that question on the Friction. air. I didn't put it that way exactly, <clears throat> but I said, how do you know when you're finished on the toilet? And he said, friction. So that, that was the answer on that one. You know, so. um, 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 uh, what is the name of that show? It's a something crew or something, something. Uh, Gilligan's Island? Huh? Oh, I know. I know. Here we go. Here we go. I, I know who's in it. So all I got to do is I just have to go to, uh, oh, I got to hurry up, though, because I don't have much time here. Well, where are we? Oh, there we go. Okay. Brendan Fraser. Family. Time. Bren. Is it D A N? I don't know. Fraser. Brendan Fraser. Here we go. All right. Name of the show is. Here we go. Um, oh, geez. Uh, Doom Patrol. That's it. Doom, Doom Patrol. Patrol. Watch Doom Patrol. You okay. will love it. You will love it. It's fun and it's interesting and it's well done and it's uh, it's worth watching. So, okay. Doom Patrol with Brendan Fraser. It's on the Fox Channel, right? No, no, it was on DC and now they moved all those DC Universe shows because they're all, you know, Warner's. DC is Warner product. Um, uh, they uh, they turned, brought them all over to you know HBO Max. So that's what you're watching when you watch Titans. Also watch Stargirl. Stargirl's very good. Mm -hmm. I really like Stargirl a lot. Watch it because I can't get my wife to watch that. You know, <laughs> I've got her watching Gotham reluctantly, but, you know. Mm -hmm. And she only likes watching it because the guy playing Alfred is the guy who's the voice on her favorite show, which is the British version of Master Chef Professionals. So, uh, and he describes all the food in very... <clears throat> Nice centurion tones, and so she likes that. Well, folks, that uh, that's going to be slowly wrapping up another week. Let's see here, and, and we, we've held on to our audience. We doing Monday? Monday's holiday. Oh. We doing Monday? Oh, it's just it's not it's not it's it's not our holiday. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it, it, I would do a show with it on that day, even if I was working on regular radio. Uh yeah no we'll we'll do we'll do Monday cause I I can't miss that's my that's my guilty pleasure that little show you uh -huh. know it's just I just figure it's an hour of me just talking to a bunch of people and everybody being really friendly with each other it's kind of gotten that way here too to be very honest with you and I like that you know bring back Bill so we can yell at him nah <laughs> I I I I'm, I don't know if I I've got to maybe talk to him about having him whether he's going to be on on Tuesday because he he still he feels it's still a conspiracy and I just think we don't want to incite that kind of thought we don't want to incite it he but, can't believe that really does he really oh well I guess he does all of them do all all of them do yeah yeah cult yeah. Yep. Uh, Ask Alan. Alan knows Phil. He believes it, right? He does. He's a true believer. Anyway, everybody, I want you to have a nice weekend. Robert, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, uh, uh, Charlie. Thank you to Jeff. Thank you to Josh. Thank you to uh, Steve, uh, Tricker Steve and his dog, Rocky, who we haven't seen tonight. Uh, but Kevin, thank you so much for being here. And Brian, thank you. And we haven't seen uh, her in a little while. Is there a reason for that? Your daughter? Oh, Adrian. Adrian? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, she's, I don't know. She's just busy. Oh, yeah. okay. She's, she's gotten over Too the, busy for us now. She's gotten yeah. over the thrill of being an internet star. And yeah. uh, John Larkin, thank you so much. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Great show. And that's our, uh, that's our, that's our group for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's all she wrote. Let me just get rid of them here so that, um, uh, they're not hanging on. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. He'll be taking calls on Skype, okay, at GabNet Live. GabNet Live. He'll tell you how to do it. In the meantime, I'm going to take the weekend off. I'll see some of you on Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock Eastern for our little Monday pop up show, we call it. We do it on Facebook. And then we'll be back again on, uh, on Tuesday. 
uh, for another big edition of the big show here uh, at 10.30 Eastern Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please wear a mask and be safe out there. Bye, everybody. Bye.